His name is Cain. He had a horse along the countryside. I saw him ride. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 revenge kills in movies. Men with me, brother. Our great father is dead. For this list, we'll be looking at memorable moments in films where characters get even by taking out the bad guy. Due to the nature of this list, there will be spoilers. If there's a kill we missed, come after us in the comments. Number 20. I like the way you die. Django Unchained. Freed by bounty hunter Dr. Schultz, Django is determined to find and rescue his enslaved wife, Broomhilda. However, first he gets vengeance on the slavers who separated them. I like the way you beg, boy. Together with Schultz, he confronts the Brittle brothers on a plantation, right as Big John is tormenting a black woman. A flashback shows us how they did the same to poor Broomhilda. So when Django throws Big John back at him, along with a bullet, you can't help but cheer. I like the way you die, boy. He's not done, whipping and unloading his gun into Lil Raj before Schultz finishes off the last brother. Number 19. Castle Hits the Saints, The Punisher Frank Castle's vengeance is always brutal. You'll smell burning meat and then, then it'll hurt. After mafia boss Howard Saint kills his family, Frank manipulates Saint into killing those closest to him. Once that's done, he begins the final phase of his revenge, and it is an absolute bloodbath. The climax sees Frank attack Saint's club ruthlessly murdering his men and son in the process. When he catches up to Saint, he reveals how he manipulated him before tying him to a car and sending it into a parking lot with an absurd amount of explosives. Overkill, yes, but stylish all the same. Number 18. Amsterdam Kills the Butcher – Gangs of New York When it comes to a good revenge plot, it's all about the timing. And may the Christian Lord guide my hand against your Roman popery! Prepare to receive the true Lord! Eternally traumatized by the murder of his father, Irish immigrant Amsterdam waits for his day to take vengeance on gang leader Bill the Butcher. Versing himself in the arts of combat and persuasion, Amsterdam earns a position as Bill's right-hand man. However, his assassination attempt is foiled when his identity becomes exposed. Ultimately, though, the two have their moment of reckoning in a brutal knife fight, where Amsterdam takes his long-awaited victory stab. Mighty Lord. You with a dagger in my hand. Guide my hand on this day of vengeance. Number 17. Death by Microwave – The Last House on the Left This kill is as creative as it is satisfying. It's been an accident. During a storm, John and Emma Collingwood give shelter to a group who, unknown to the Collingwoods, just assaulted and tried to kill their daughter. Once they figure it out, violence is inevitable. In the climax, main villain Krug is knocked unconscious and John and Emma take their daughter to the hospital. But John returns to the house to get revenge. Hey, what are you doing? Doc? Paralyzed from the neck down, Krug is powerless as John places his head inside a microwave. You can guess what happens next. It ain't pretty. Number 16. Pufferfish Paralysis – Law-Abiding Citizen After Clarence Darby murders Clyde Shelton's wife and daughter, he serves only a few years behind bars. So Clyde decides to deliver his own form of judgment on an operating table. You see, I know what it feels like to be helpless, just like when I watched you slaughter my whole family. He paralyzes his victim with pufferfish venom straps him down and, well, we can't really go into the details, but whatever you're imagining, it's probably worse. Clyde seems to relish the terror and pain he causes. It's a gruesome, horrific scene, but for that same reason, it's a memorable one. I'm a father, I have a little girl, and what you did, bravo. Number 15. Harmonica's Hunt – Once Upon a Time in the West the revenge tale in this spaghetti western is unique in that the motive is only revealed at the end. So you found out you're not a businessman after all. Just a man. Hired by a railroad tycoon to intimidate a family off their land, gunman Frank murders them instead. Frank eventually enacts his own schemes, but they're disrupted by the enigmatic harmonica. Five thousand dollars. <laughs> As the two prepare to duel, a flashback reveals Harmonica's motivation. When Harmonica was a boy, Frank hanged his older brother and forced Harmonica to hold him up. His nickname comes from the harmonica that Frank placed in his mouth. We were already rooting for Harmonica, but with this fact revealed, Frank's demise is all the more gratifying. Number 14. Theater Fire – Inglorious Bastards 
During World War II, Shazana's family is killed by SS officer Hans the Jew Hunter Landa. While she doesn't get to kill Hans, she does manage to get revenge on the entire Nazi leadership. When her theater is chosen to premiere a Nazi propaganda film, she devises a simple but effective plan to lock them in and burn them alive. The cherry on top is the special message that she spliced into the footage, telling them that a Jew is about to kill them. I have a message for Germany. That you are all going to die. It makes her revenge all the sweeter. After all the trauma she's endured, we can't blame her for a little theatricality. Number 13. Strapped In, The Crow A year after Eric Draven and his fiancée are murdered, Eric is resurrected and seeks revenge. Each kill is unique and deserving for what the men did to the couple. <laughs> Victims, aren't we all? But it's the death of gang leader T-Bird that's the most satisfying. After kidnapping him at gunpoint, Eric straps T-Bird into his car and loads it with explosives. The moment when T-Bird realizes his kidnapper's identity makes the scene especially delectable. You can't be you. We put you through the window. There ain't no coming back. This is the really real world. There ain't no coming back. We killed your dad. There ain't no coming back. As the car careens off a pier, it erupts in a shower of sparks and flames. Eric leaves behind his insignia, capping off the coolest execution in the movie. Number 12. Blood is Thicker Than Water – Road to Perdition Michael Sullivan, a loving father who works as a hitman, sees his two lives collide when his son witnesses one of his kills. Jesus Christ, Connor, what the hell are you thinking? Connor, his boss's unstable son, decides to take matters into his own hands by killing Michael's wife as well as his other son. Michael avenges the murder of his loved ones by hunting down Connor in his hotel. The music and tracking shot add to the tension as Michael pulls the trigger in the bathroom. We don't realize that it's Connor who's been shot until the door closes and we see his body reflected in the mirror, making the kill that much more satisfying. Number 11. Mrs. Lovett's Last Dance Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street In a convoluted scheme to make Sweeney Todd favor her, Mrs. Lovett convinces him that his wife Lucy had killed herself. I tried to stop her, but she wouldn't listen to me. The truth soon stares Sweeney in the eyes after he cuts the throat of the wife he hadn't recognized until it was too late. Stricken with grief at the realization that this was all an act of pure jealousy, he fakes his forgiveness to Mrs. Lovett in return for an opportunity to cast her into a furnace. Living it, really living it. Number 10. Man's Best Friend – John Wick Audiences can watch people getting murdered in movies all day long. I heard you struck my son. Yes, sir, I did. Yeah, may I ask why? Yeah, well, because he stole John Wick's car, sir, and uh, killed his dog. But the moment a dog is harmed, well, that's a different story, damn it. What makes matters worse than John Wick is that the dog in question was a gift from his late wife. After gangster Yosef breaks into John's home and kills the poor pooch, the former assassin leaves retirement to get payback. He has to fight his way through dozens of henchmen before he finally catches up with Yosef. When they come face to face, John doesn't even let him finish his sentence, getting his revenge with cool efficiency. And that's why they call him Baba Yaga. Number 9. Time to Meet God, Sicario Vengeance isn't the driving force behind the plot of this action thriller, but it is the main motivation behind its most dangerous character. Alejandro was once a prosecutor before his wife and child were murdered by Fausto Alarcón, a cartel drug lord. His new life as an assassin eventually leads him to retribution. In a movie that's comprised of tense moments, the scene in which Alejandro gets revenge is one of the tensest. Alarcón thinks Alejandro is just there for him. But instead, Alejandro kills his family and lets Alarcón sit with that awful feeling before shooting him, too. It's a chilling scene that isn't soon forgotten. Number 8. I'm here to kill you. Unforgiven. Will and Ned are retired outlaws, trying to walk the straight and narrow. However, after Will is tempted to pursue a bounty, he convinces Ned to join him. The bounty is on two cowboys who disfigured a sex worker. Since local sheriff Little Bill let them go free, the woman's peers raise the bounty themselves. After hearing that the sheriff has caught and killed Ned, Will shows up at the town saloon to take revenge. And I'm here to kill you, Little Bill, for what you did to Ned. 
While he's outnumbered, he's not outgunned. Against all odds, he takes down Little Bill and his deputies. The serves got nothing to do with it. I'll see you in hell with your money. Number 7. A very particular set of skills, taken. When his daughter is kidnapped, former CIA officer Brian Mills gives the perpetrators a now often quoted warning. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you are looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. As it turns out, they really should have listened. With his impressive skill set, Brian is able to track down and capture Marco, the mob boss who sarcastically wished him good luck. Marco soon learns how far Brian will go to rescue his child. Brian straps him to a chair, puts metal rods through his legs, and electrocutes him for information. Once he has it, he flips the switch again and leaves Marco to die. A particularly unpleasant way to go. Number 6. Bloodbath at the Prom Carrie. Prom is supposed to be a fun rite of passage. But Carrie's high school tormentors turned it into a nightmare. When Carrie is elected prom queen, she thinks that her classmates finally like her. Instead, it's all a trick, set up so that her bullies can drop a bucket of pig's blood on her. In one of the most iconic scenes committed to film, Carrie snaps, unleashing her telekinetic abilities. What ensues is a bloodbath as Carrie traps and murders nearly all her peers. She also gets revenge on her tormentors when she causes their car to crash. <laughs> Number 5. Maximus Kills Commodus – Gladiator In real life, the Roman Emperor Commodus was assassinated by his wrestling partner Narcissus in his bath. But Ridley Scott's version of events is much more satisfying. There was once a dream that was Rome. You could only whisper it. Anything more than a whisper, and it would vanish. After Commodus kills Maximus' wife and son, Maximus is enslaved and becomes a gladiator. However, he becomes so popular that Commodus decides to fight him in the Colosseum. To help even the odds, Commodus stabs Maximus before the battle. However, Maximus still manages to disarm him. When Commodus pulls out a hidden knife, he's thwarted again. At least Maximus was able to use his last moments to get revenge. Go to them. Number 4. Move the Coin – X-Men First Class being a hero feels great, but it doesn't come close to the feeling of giving that special someone their just desserts. Mr. Chocolate. This good. Feels new. In 1944, Nazi officer Klaus Schmidt torments Eric Lenscher in Auschwitz, killing his mother. Years later, Eric is on a quest for vengeance. Together with Xavier, he's able to subdue Schmidt, who now calls himself Sebastian Shaw. With the villain immobilized, the X-Men have won. However, Eric still wants revenge. Disregarding Xavier's pleas, Eric uses his magnetic powers to slowly force a coin through Sebastian's skull, reenacting the hellish test he was put through as a boy. We are the future. Number 3. Becoming Wrath 7. Revenge isn't always sweet. When serial killer John Doe is in custody, he baits the two detectives on his case into taking him to a secret location. The client says there are two more bodies, two more victims, hidden away. He will take Detectives Mills and Somerset to these bodies, but only Detectives Mills and Somerset, only at 6 o'clock today. Once they gather there, they receive a box containing the head of Detective David Mills' wife. While the serial killer goes into grotesque detail about how he committed the evil deed, the detective wrestles with one of the hardest decisions of his life. What's in the box? Not till you give me the What's gun. in the box? Should he show restraint or commit murder himself? completing John Doe's lists of seven deadly sins. Overcome with anguish, Mills can't help himself. Number 2. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya, the Princess Bride. If the moment ever presented itself, you have an awesome line ready. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Talented swordsman Inigo Montoya dreamed of the day he'd be granted the opportunity to face off against his father's killer, the six-fingered Count Rugen. When the final battle commences, Inigo recites his rehearsed line over and over, reminding himself as to why he must win. Inigo Montoya, you killed my father. Prepare to die. Stop saying that! After turning the tide of the fight in a miraculous comeback, Inigo finishes Count Rugen with a last lunge. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.
You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Killing Bill – Kill Bill Volume 2 This revenge kill is right there in the movie title. After her former boss kills her husband and shoots her, the bride devises a hit list of everyone responsible. Following an extended journey that includes slicing the top of Oren Ishii's head clean off, stabbing Vernita Green with a throwing knife, and snatching the eye out of L Driver's head, the bride finally makes her way to her main target. I overreacted. After a quick sit down and chat, the bride greets Bill with the five point palm exploding heart technique giving her ex-lover approximately one minute to say goodbye. You look ready. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.